For many years, I've been looking at the AKG K700 series of headphones with interest, but until now, I have not checked them out. However, in the past few months since I've started reviewing headphones, I've had a number of comments asking my opinion on them. So here are the AKG K712 Pro, which are an open-backed headphone with a 62 ohm impedance and 105 dB SPL sensitivity dynamic driver. Now, according to AKG, these are RP for $499, However, I paid £185 for these in the UK. Now, it looks like they're a little bit more expensive in the US and are going for around $300 at the time of writing, and this is a rather competitive price point. A range that also includes headphones like the Bayer Dynamic DT880, the Sennheiser HD599, the 58X, the 6XX, and even the 600 and 650, not to mention several other fantastic models from other brands. So that means that the AKG K712 Pro has its work cut out to stand out from the pack. So, does it do that? Well, let's get into it. Hey guys, this is Noel and this is Wheezy Reviews. And if you're new to this channel, this is a place for discussing and learning about audio. Each week I take a look at something audio related and let you know what I think. So if you're into that kind of thing, make sure you subscribe. Now, taking a look at the headphones themselves, they are a reasonably light 235 grams and they have this suspension headband design. I've never been a huge fan of suspension headbands because you cannot adjust them to your own taste and they just sit on the head however they fall and you either like the way that they fit, or you don't. Now, I don't mind how these fit on my head, but I don't find the leather suspension to be especially comfortable, at least not out of the box. When I first started using these, I found the pressure on the top of my head to be rather uncomfortable past an hour or so. And I think this is due to the stiffness of the leather itself, not conforming to the head, and thus causing hot spots. But as I realized this is genuine leather, I figured it would break in over time but I wasn't prepared to wait for that, so I spent a fair bit of time flexing the leather to break it in like a new pair of boots. And it is now much more flexible and much more comfortable. Now the outer part of the headband are these two plastic rails, or at least they are plastic coated. There's an incredible amount of flexibility to the design, which will certainly help with comfort, but I don't know if there's any metal inside these rails and I'd imagine they actually carry the wiring because there is no sign of any wiring anywhere on these headphones. They do really have this rather clean design. However, I do feel like I need to baby these headphones. They certainly do not feel like they could take a lot of punishment. Now, I've talked previously about how well-built the plastic construction of Sennheiser headphones are and how tank-like and bomb-proof the Bayer Dynamic headphones are and the K712 definitely feels a lot less durable. But the ear cups are big and large and round with these big round ear pads. The pads are about as round as the ones on any Bayer Dynamic, however the foam is much deeper and it's a firmer uh, memory foam unlike the soft and shallow pads that you're going to find on a Bayer Dynamic. Personally, I find these pads to be exceptionally comfortable. I should note that these are removable and replaceable, and also note that the K712 pads are different from the pads on the other K700 series headphones. These are an upgraded memory foam version and actually pretty expensive. The replacements for these run about £80 for the pair. Looking inside the ear pads, you also have this little layer of foam covering the driver plate should your ears be brushing against that uh, driver plate. Damping force is reasonably light. It's much lighter than on the HD650. Um, but perhaps a little bit tighter than the super light force that you would get on the HD599. These ear cups also have a decent amount of movement over 360 degrees actually, rather than just the vertical and lateral um, movement that mo you'd get on most headphones. These have 360 degrees of rotation. And coupled with the extremely flexible chassis and rather nice deep ear pads, these do conform to your head superbly. All in, in terms of comfort, after breaking in the leather headband, I find these to be supremely comfortable. Included with the AKG K712 Pro is this rather fancy, but rather odd velvet carrying pouch. And you're also gonna get a couple of different cables. So you get a three meter straight cable in this fancy orange colorway that matches the headphones. 
And you also get the usual terrible AKG 3 meter coiled cable, which is a very stiff and plasticky feeling rubber. And as usual, I'm not overly impressed on a personal level. I find 3 meter cables too long for listening at my desk. Although this one is rather nice and flexible cable, and it's also quite a nice touch making it orange to match with the orange of the headphones themselves. However, I wish that AKG would redesign their coiled cable with a softer and more flexible rubber. Thankfully, the connector used here is a mini XLR connector, which means cables are easy to come by. Also, both cables use a 3.5 millimeter TRS mini jack with a screw on 6.35 mil adapter, which is my favorite configuration. So AKG wins some points back there. And actually one more thing that's included with these headphones and don't go and tell Bandrew, but you also get a sticker. And in terms of how easy they are to drive at 62 ohms and 105 dB SPL, they're actually not all that sensitive. I do find that I need a couple more degrees turn on the amp volume knob than I do with the HD650. This is definitely a headphone that needs an amp to get the most out of it. Moving on to sound, and I really wasn't sure what to expect, but spoiler alert, I actually really like how these sound. Actually, I thought they sounded remarkably similar to the HD650, at least below one kilohertz. Although one more obvious and immediately noticeable difference is in terms of openness and staging. But I'll go into that in a bit more detail in just a moment. A quick note on how I test these headphones. All listening was done with a mix of either Spotify or FLAC files from my PC through an O2 and SDAC. So let's start out with staging. I think these might be my new favorite gaming headphones, at least for more casual titles. As in terms of openness and staging, they do have this rather open sound without sounding reverberant or spacey or disorientating. Now I've been, I've been totally blown away by their performance in games. My usual go-to for gaming being the Bayer Dynamic DT1990 Pro. The uh, K7 II Pro I think has a more open and natural soundstage than the 1990, which is no slouch in the uh, staging department. Now, in terms of musicality, this gives a much more natural and open staging that I think sounds just right, which is quite the contrast with the intimate staging of the HD650. In terms of imaging, I'm not feeling like I'm missing out on any positional cues at all. Now, I don't think in terms of imaging, it's quite as good as the DT1990, so I'll probably continue to reach for those for the most competitive titles. But for everything else, I think that the K712 is my new favorite gaming headphone. Now, one point of comparison could be the Sennheiser HD599. And imaging perhaps is probably quite similar on that. Although staging, I think, is better on the K712. Now, bass is perhaps a little bit light for my tastes, which are closer to the Harman target. Now, that's to say I prefer a, a much more full extension. Now, I think this has a very similar bass performance to the HD650, but with a little bit more extension and thus a little bit more slam capability as well. Now, neither the K712 or the 650 extend particularly deeply. Both start to roll off at, at similar points, but I think that the K712 does less so, which I think is pretty good for an open back dynamic uh, driver headphone. But these are certainly not bass cannons and you could consider them to be reasonably bass light. Now the K712, however, doesn't have quite as warm a sound as the HD650. And that seems probably to be due to less energy in the upper bass region, somewhere between 100 and 200 Hertz. And actually on some tracks, I think that leans towards a more detailed low end with perhaps a bit more of an articulated bass performance. In terms of uh, mid-range, the K712 is interesting. Up to around one kilohertz, maybe 800 to one kilohertz, it's actually quite similar to the HD650. It's nice and flat. In fact, as I said earlier, if you were to copy and paste the HD650 below one kilohertz, and that gets you fairly close to how the K712 actually sounds. However, in terms of upper, mids, and treble, things get a little bit weird, and I don't think they're quite as even as the HD650. On a sign sweep, I could hear a bit of energy around 2 kHz on the K712, 
but I not to the point that I personally found it shouty, but also somewhere around four kilohertz. There's a bit more of a rise there, and there's a bit of a dip at one kilohertz, three kilohertz, and six kilohertz. And then again, we've got a bit more energy somewhere around eight or nine kilohertz. So actually, on the whole, it's a rather lumpy performance. And that does seem to match up with the frequency charts, which I will put on screen just now. Now, they don't really sound peaky or, or grainy, actually, or anything like that. And this lumpiness, I don't find especially audible. But overall, I find the HD650 and the K712 to have a very similar presentation with a, a slightly brighter edge to the K712. However, I think this is certainly quite track dependent. So I'll go into that in a bit more detail in just a moment. But certainly there are no points where I found the K712 to be too bright or to be piercing or anything like that. But it is fair to say that the K712 is a bit brighter um, in the mid to upper treble, um, especially around eight kilohertz region. However, on the whole, this is a rather restrained and inoffensive sound that I've actually been really, really enjoying for pretty much everything that I've listened to. There's been no point where I found the K712 to sound poor or overly bright or muddy or just wrong on any track. And I think that they are perhaps one of the most well-rounded and performant headphones that I've ever heard. Now, I'll go through a few of my reference tracks in just a moment, but first I'm going to sum up some of the differences between the HD650 and the K712 Pro. So the K712 has a little bit more bass extension and a little bit more slam ability, but that's only really noticeable on certain tracks. The K712 is not quite as warm as the HD650, perhaps due to less upper bass energy, and this is probably the most noticeable difference. Now, this also leads to a little more low-end clarity. Uh, bass quality is a little bit more articulate, but timbre is actually very similar, um, nice and natural between both headphones. In terms of timbre, this, these are pretty fantastic. I find that the electric guitar has a little less crunch on the 712 versus the 650. Male vocals are perhaps a little bit sweet, as in very slightly recessed, and female vocals, I think, are really quite present. The K712 has a, definitely has a little bit more mid to upper treble sparkle than the 650, but both roll off fairly swiftly, I think, after around 10 kilohertz. Both are excellently resolving, but in slightly different ways, and that is quite track dependent. So actually, let's get on to the reference tracks then. So Talk Talk by A Perfect Circle. I think the K712 is a little bit less warm than the HD650, and the guitar has a little bit less crunch. The vocals may be the tiniest little bit more recessed, but overall I think that the sound is, is very similar to the 650. In Polaris by Dead Mouse, again, the K712 is slightly less warm. But the synth arpeggio between about 5 minutes and 30 and 6 minutes 30 is, is slightly more cutting on the 650. The K712 has a slightly better low end and a bit more low end clarity. And the 650 perhaps, I would say, is maybe a little bit more musical on the whole. Better Get It In Your Soul by Charles Mingus. The K712 is so close to the 650, it's crazy. The, the bass is a little bit more forwards on the 650, and that's probably due to the, the, the little bit more energy in the upper bass on the 650. The brass has a slight bit more warmth and fullness on the 650 than the K712. Broken by Sleet Akinney, the K712's detail resolution here is absolutely incredible. I can hear the reverb much more clearly on the K712, especially around Corin Tucker's vocals, which are actually hauntingly beautiful on these. And to the point that I really prefer listening to them on the K712 than the 650. Uh, the one downside is that the piano is just slightly less full than it is on the 650. And, and after listening to that haunting vocal, I went and listened to some Bjork and Venus is a Boy, and it's just utterly beautiful on both the HD650 and the K712. I can't call it. In Fireflies and Empty Skies by God is an Astronaut, I think this track, of all the ones I listened to, this one has the most difference between both headphones. 
there seems to be a little bit more energy, clarity, detail, sparkle, edge, whatever you want to call it, in the treble on the K712 versus the 650. Something sounds a little bit, I'm not going to say off, but there's something different going on somewhere in the midst, and I can't quite put my finger on it. That's not to say that it sounded bad on the K712. It just sounds a bit different to the 650. And then in Deep Jungle Walk by Asterix, which is a, a techno track, and there's a surprising amount of slam in the kick and a big, full and driving bass, and it's much more enjoyable on the K712 than it is on the 650. In fact, it's pretty excellent bass performance for an open-backed dynamic headphone without overrunning into and muddying up the low mids like on the X2HR. Now before I make a final conclusion, I'm going to sum it up. So overall for comfort, the K712 are a bit of a mixed bag. On the one hand, superbly comfortable ear pads and a nice flexible chassis, but the leather headband is extremely stiff out of the box. However, as I said, after being broken in, I have, I have found the comfort to be pretty excellent on the whole. Now, I would say these are probably more comfortable than the HD650, well, once the leather has broken in. Not as comfortable as the HD599, but that's, that's a, a, a high benchmark, I think. But it's almost there, so that's, that's good praise, I think. In terms of build, though, they don't inspire confidence with their light and flexible plastic construction especially versus the competition from the likes of Sennheiser and Bayer Dynamic. However, features like the removable cable and mini XLR connector are most welcome. Now, if you want durable, this ain't it. In fact, even at the cheaper UK price, I do expect better. I mean, you can get the well-built HD599 and you could also get the built like a tank DT880. In terms of sound, I think, well, I think that is what you're paying for with the K712 Pro. So the K712 are an excellently detailed, balanced and enjoyable headphone. And on sound alone, I'd probably take these over almost anything else in this price category. Gaming performance is also truly excellent and these are definitely my new favorite gaming headphones. Would I give up my HD6XX for these? Probably not, but I also don't think I could go back to not owning the K712 Pro. So let's just talk about value then, because this is this is a very difficult one. On the one hand, I paid £185 for these, and I think for that price, I can absolutely, definitely, 100% recommend the K712 for that price. But at the more expensive US price of $300 plus, uh, that becomes a much more difficult choice. So can I recommend them? Uh, absolutely, especially if you already own an HD 6XX or 650, or if you're really, really into your gaming. But if you don't currently own an HD 650 or 6XX, and you've got the choice of either paying over, th over $300 for the K712 Pro, or just $200 for the HD 6XX, then it becomes a much more difficult um, decision and a, and a much more difficult recommendation. In that case, I would actually say, go out and get the HD6XX instead. But if you don't already own an HD650 or 6XX, you're looking for an alternative and you can get the K712 Pro for a good price, then I would say absolutely go for it, go right ahead. Because I think that the K712 Pro is really fantastic. Right, that's going to be it then. I hope you enjoyed this review. And if you did, then don't forget to leave a like. And if you haven't already, then consider subscribing by hitting the red button down below. And if you're looking to support the channel, if you check down in the description, there will be a bunch of links on how you can do that. Now, I'm going to have a lot more content like this coming out soon. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, have a good one.